Oh, connected. Cool. Alright, welcome back. We're gonna be continuing on with this guy. So I did kind of chucked this character into a light rig that I've kind of just made for one of my classes. Um, so this is pretty much where we got him up to last session. Uh, basically, we've got most of the stuff kind of there at varying levels of completion. Um, we'll kind of see how far we can go today. I'll probably start bouncing around the character a fair bit at this point. Um, see if there's any kind of big pieces that are missing so it might kind of have a look at the knee pads um, but I think the main bit I'll probably start focusing on is the sort of upper body um, padding sections there's a couple uh, methods I can kind of show that I would use to sort of start building that out um, just getting it feeling like it's actually made of separate layers as opposed to just one blob that I'm kind of sculpting into so kind of get going with that But what I'll probably start with is the legs here. So what I'm going to do is start masking this out. So I'll swap my lasso around. So I'm just going to mask these out and then what I can do is just extract it into a separate piece of mesh. But I might just have a little look at my reference real quick. So I'm kind of going for something like that. I don't quite like these little tab things on there. Kind of want it to be a little bit more of a whole piece. So it's going to be kind of a bit more like this where it's like a whole strap and then it's kind of just got like little Velcro bits on the side. Um, but I think I kind of like, kind of like this sort of uh, actual pad shape. So I'm probably going to like get that and kind of mush all them together but you know you know pretty vague so probably lean into this sort of shape so got that do i need anything else i'm just gonna unmask a section just so it can actually be like have a thickness to it or like a an end point that I can kind of just pull around. So for this, I'm just going to use subtool and go to extract. Um, and I'm going to set my thickness to zero. Just hit extract. So basically, what that's going to do is pretty much just pull out a section of um. Uh, yeah, it's going to pull out a section of mesh. Um, but it's you know not going to have any thickness to it because I can kind of do that a little bit later. Anyway, so I've just deleted that hidden part, and I'm just going to Z remesh this. So I might go to maybe like half the amount of polygons. Points. Just added a group loops just to sort of tidy that edge up a little bit. So. Cool. Turn the pants back on. I'm just going to start poly painting this back in. Whoops. Poly paint that back in. Um, just because I don't really need that anymore. I've kind of got a new piece of mesh that's sort of representing this you know, pant section here. I 
And while I'm kind of just temp, like doing some temp stuff right now, I'm going to go to dynamic subdivision, just kind of turn that on. Um, so dynamic subdivision is going to like, kind of like preview smooth it to a degree, but I kind of don't really want it to get too smoothed out necessarily. Um, but the main thing I want is just to add some thickness to it. Just so it's kind of becoming a bit more of like an actual like strap around. So kind of just getting this out of fabric -y sort of section in there. Um, and I don't really have to, because it's technically, if I turn this back off, it's still that single plane. I don't really have to worry about dealing with thicknesses or anything like that. I can kind of do all my sculpting and then just sort of apply it. Uh, but what I think I'm going to do is just sort of start pulling some of this across and um, getting that looking a little bit more like the kind of two sections meeting up. doesn't have to I mean for what I'm doing it doesn't have to necessarily be super perfect I kind of want it to feel like it's um, just you know, two pieces of fabric that maybe weren't velcroed back up together super tightly um, and I'm just gonna add a new primitive uh, might use a sphere and this is going to kind of be the beginning of my um, like knee pad sort of section. So they've got that auto mask it so I can go split by mask points, split that into a separate sub tool. Check my reference real quick. So yeah, going for this type of thing. So I'm just going to put that over on my second monitor. Might actually do is um, turn off symmetry and I might actually just kind of delete this section here. I don't know why that's kind of happening, it's a bit weird. Okay, interesting. Oh, I know what's happening, sorry. So yeah, turn off dynamic subdiv because it was on this mesh, so when I created a mesh from it, it was uh, doubling up. So the main reason I wanted to get rid of that section. Come on. There we go. Um, was because it was kind of like freaking out when I was using mirroring and going over there, so I just needed to get rid of it.
just going to kind of go through and just try to get basically the, the base planes of this in and then I can kind of start working on some detail pretty soon. Just using the clip curve to tidy some of this up a little bit. This would kind of be a piece that I'd probably like block out like this and then maybe do some proper bottling inside of Maya, but we'll see how we go for time. I probably won't end up doing that for this particular thing. And just to get some of these sort of shapes in, what I can do is just sort of mask some of this off and then just use my rotate and I'll just sort of move that up, just push that edge back in. So got a thing there, not, not all the way, but just going to leave it for now just so I can kind of move around a little bit, but I might just sort of uh, sub tool master and just mirror that across for the moment just so I've kind of got it. And kind of start focusing back on this and just going to get it feeling a little bit more uh, fabric-y and all that sort of stuff. I'm just going to subdivide that a few times just so I kind of have something to work with a little bit um, and I'll I just have a bit of a play around with this so I think with the trim I'm going to use some a different sort of method where I just sort of add a um, a curve around the mesh and just sort of insert a mesh that way I just say have like some velcro -y type of things around here that's going to kind of be where my um, I guess my pinch point sort of is so I'll kind of work everything having a bit of a 
much up to that sort of area. One of the other kind of things I can do, which is one of the it's relatively new with um, ZBrush, I mean, not new new, but pretty. Um, with the move tool, we've actually got a what is it, transpose cloth. So if you kind of just move it around, it's going to actually like crumple up a bit like cloth. So what I can kind of do is just sort of wiggle that around a little bit and, you know, it'll kind of like maybe take the edge off just so it doesn't look so much like just a little tube. Um, I might just update my scale on ZBrush just because my brush wasn't particularly big. Um, so you can kind of see everything's kind of like shrinking down just because I guess somewhere along the line my scale got out of whack. So, there we go. So, smooth that out a little bit. And I'm just going to kind of go pretty hard in here with some wrinkles and stuff. Um, they're not going to be like hugely realistic or anything. But it'll kind of just get me something for the cloth or the um, cloth transpose to kind of like start with, just so it's not you know just a tube. And you know, remembering I've still got my dynamic. Whoa, that's freaking out. There we go. Um, yeah, I've still got my dynamic thing on, so that's doing something. And I'm kind of imagining that there's like a kind of um, divot here for the little things to hold it onto the fabric so I'm kind of also picturing that it kind of inches into these points as well and kind of building up a little bit of fabric around there so but basically my move brush has been set to like default as my um you know, it's my default brush and uh, movement brush now so anytime I use any of this it's going to be transposed cloth so I need to you know, remember that if I'm ever doing anything that's not actually meant to be cloth, because it's easy to forget and leave it on. Um, but I might also use like a, hmm, where is it? If I just hit C, I can kind of isolate some of the cloth brushes, so maybe I'll use like a nudge or something just to kind of get some stuff sort of happening, because I figure the back here would kind of be a bit bunched up but you know maybe I'm kind of not loving the look of that it's also not colliding with my mesh but I'm not too worried about that I can kind of just move that around um, but if I go to dynamics I can kind of play with the firmness of it so maybe it'll look a bit like a thicker type of fabric but it's a little bit temperamental where it kind of just will do some weird stuff like this so I might just need to use the move brush still I'm going to use move topology just because I want this part to move, not the other bit. And just because some of this stuff is a little bit too, like, fine little gross sprinkles, I'm just going to, like, go up a subdivision level and then smooth it out just by holding shift. Um, just because I don't want such little wrinkles, I just kind of want it to be around, you know, this sort of level, I guess. And I just need some like little tabs to sort of, you know, um, go on the edge here. So, hmm, is there any insert mesh brushes I can use for that? I don't think so. So I'm just going to use a primitive. Actually, I'm just going to start with my um, knee pad as my, come on, swap, okay. um, I'm going to start with this just because it doesn't have any subdivision levels and um, it doesn't have the dynamic subdivision on so I don't have to really worry about that. So 
So I'm going to kind of do what I was doing last time with the uh, belt loop. And I'm just going to make like one bit that I'll kind of just reuse a couple times. Um, and for this, I'm going to might do a Z remesher and I'll see how that kind of holds up. Just because I need a little bit more geometry. Um, oh, hello. Good to see you again. How are you doing? Sorry, right, I wasn't looking at the second monitor. How are you doing? Nice. I mean, it's like two in the afternoon here. I was eating breakfast. How's your week been? Be heading off to work soon, right? Yeah, I saw some of your posts, that's cool. Is that like a animation project you're working on or? Are you doing that on your own or what will got a group of people or Interesting. Yeah, we had to do that a little while ago, but we've been pretty lucky where we are. It's um, not been too bad, you know, knock on wood, but yeah, we had a lockdown pretty recently, but back in the office now. working from home like do you have to like remote in or I can't hear anybody talk about that it's fine. I'm stuck on my second monitor um need some bit of a seam there Any 
anyone else tuning in? Anyone else working from home or anything? Yeah, I've been kind of doing the same. I've um, recently been trying to get into painting with gouache, which has been really interesting. I was talking to some of the guys at work about it and um, it seemed interesting, so I kind of gave that a go. It actually kind of, the timing worked out pretty well because um, we kind of like, I bought the paint and all the brushes and stuff and everything I'd need, spent way too much money, and then we went into lockdown, so I was like, cool, I guess I've actually got time to do some of this, so it's been really cool. Cause yeah, it is kind of interesting how you, it's like similar enough to my job where, you know, you've got kind of transferable skills, but different enough that it feels like I'm not just doing what I do for work at home. Oh, cool. What's the kind of end goal for it? Is it like a cool little cartoon or is it just uh, some clips? Cheers. Yeah, it's um, been fun. I yeah, only started like a couple of weeks ago, but it kind of I feel like it kind of lines up with the way that I like think about things. So I think it just sort of worked out well, but I've never actually really tried painting much before. I think I was a bit too scared of mixing colors and stuff, but it's actually not as bad as I thought because I kind of just started with a limited palette. So I've kind of had to been mixing all my own colors, which uh, yeah, it felt a little bit daunting, but kind of more I did it, it felt better. And it was actually, I tried making stuff up, but when I started actually using photo reference and stuff, it was a lot easier than just trying to make shit up. Yeah, exactly. I think one of the other things is like for especially 3D um, artists a lot of the time they don't really do too much drawing or anything which I don't know I always feel like it's a bit of a missed opportunity because you kind of I always kind of find that I think about things different when I'm doing stuff in different mediums so and it feels like even if it's not going to be like something you do for work it's probably something that should at least be kind of thought about you know as like a thing to try. That's really cool. Like, um, have you done much storyboarding stuff before, or is this kind of first kind of crack at it? Hmm. Yeah, me too. I think the thing I kind of like about it is you can kind of really control what people actually get to see. So it's like you can kind of tailor it a little bit more and yeah you mean you can kind of like cut corners a little bit where it's like you don't see that way or it's like I'm never going to let the viewer look at that.
reconstruct the subdivision levels just to kind of keep things a little bit more formant. How long have you been working on your uh, animation for? So I'm just going to do something really quick. Um, oh, so I might do a little bit of just kind of nudging around. I could actually end up undoing it, but um, I'm just going to add some trim to the border of this. So because, well, actually, I need to confirm this first. Um, if I just go to geometry, so I've already I've just saved it. So if I need to go back, I can do that. Um, if I go to geometry, I can go to apply. So now I've kind of applied my thickness. Good. I might just undo that. I might just add a couple. Oops. Just add a couple segments. Then hit apply. Just so it kind of holds its border shape a little bit better. And I'm gonna go down to deformation and just go to polish. Yeah. Kind of smooth some of that out a little bit. I mean I actually don't mind how that looks. I think I might actually just keep it like that and just sort of draw in some edges to it. Hmm. I mean, yeah, I don't think you necessarily have to you know, have it be your thing or necessarily think that an attempt goes well, but I think kind of you probably just learn a lot from trying it out anyway, right? Okay, yeah. I think we've all kind of got projects like that, right? Oh, I've got a bunch of them that I'm like, it's my thing, and then I'll kind of forget about it for a little while. Did you um, go straight into storyboarding, or did you do any like script or anything like that? I tried, I tried storyboarding recently, but I kind of realized I needed to actually write some stuff down, otherwise I was just, I ended up like spinning my wheels a fair bit. But it was pretty fun though, just sort of messing around a little bit. Um, 2D, is that right? Or... That's cool, yeah. I mean, I'm keen to see the updates as they come out. Oh, yep. Yeah. He's using Mida to block it out, or? I know a lot of the concept guys that um, work use uh, Blender. But I suppose it... Do, does anyone at your studio use Blender, or is it pretty much all sort of like Maya? Interesting. Yeah, 
been kind of curious if um, anyone at bigger studios actually uses Blender for actual sort of like production stuff that's not concept. It's always one of those programs that I feel like I should learn and I feel like I'm kind of being lazy by not learning it, but it was so slow. Oh, 3D Max, really? That's interesting. I haven't used that program in years. I kind of assumed the standard would have been mine. Kind of the opposite, I started in um, 3ds Max and then I went over to Maya when I... Well, I like, started in 3ds Max when I was in high school, like, messing around with it and a bit of ZBrush, but that was pretty early day ZBrush. Then went over to Maya and, um, in, uh, in further education. sleeves. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, I can't really remember modifiers too well. I don't think I've used 3ds Max particularly well when I was using it, so I don't know if I... I think, uh, I think it was like a melt modifier I used, which I used on literally everything. I pretty much like turned everything into wood and um, yeah, use a melt modifier just because I thought that was cool looking, but I don't think I did anything particularly good when I was in high school. <laughs> but I mean, is it... Is Modify is kind of like similar to what you can kind of use in Blender, or is it... Because it seems like Blender you can kind of do stuff non-destructively, it seems. Everything I've seen. Like, there's some stuff that Blender does that lately I've kind of been like, it makes my seem a little bit stupid. sort of switch over from Maya to Mac. I feel like I'd be able to do it again, but I feel like it would just sort of take my brain some time to click over. It's a pretty quick turnaround, I feel. I like to switch programs. I mean, 
feels like pretty common though. I feel like a lot of jobs you kind of just have to rock up and there'll be something. There's kind of like something different about every job that you gotta figure out, right? So I figure everyone's gotta roll with whatever. Because I remember like when I realized that I had to go from uh, Max to Maya, I was like kind of annoyed, but then it kind of, I don't know, in hindsight, it's sort of pretty indicative of work, really. Like every work, everything I've had has sort of had its own, um, own thing that needs learning. Yeah, I suppose like modeling is modeling at the end of the day. Exactly, it's like if you know how to make good topology, it doesn't really matter what program you're making the topology in. I agree. Sometimes when I'm kind of teaching students, we'll kind of want you to show them the magic thing that'll make it easier, but it's like, kind of really is nothing that's going to be that magic bullet for you. You kind of just have to be the person doing the work, really, when it comes down to it. But, you know, the way I always kind of think about it is like, if someone has a pencil and they're kind of like, able to draw something, it's not because they've got a better pencil, it's just because they know how to use it. Yeah, exactly, it just doesn't exist. As nice as it would be to have the make pretty button. Cool, alright, got some new slaves. Probably gonna leave it there because I've probably looked at that for too long. Um, I might use the Z remesher. So, what am I going to do? I might... I'm either going to do more on the pants or do a bit of upper body stuff just to kind of like bounce around a little bit more. Um, yeah. Yeah, I remember, um, I don't know, when I was younger, I was like, I have to get the biggest Wacom tablet because it'll be awesome and then I'll be awesome but then it's like these days I just use this cheap little Bluetooth um, Wacom on my couch with my laptop and I can do like 99% of what I need I've actually done like a few um, like collectible toys just like from my couch <laughs> with a little Bluetooth tablet so it's like totally don't need anything like super insane to sort of just do I 
kind of weird though because I feel like a lot of people kind of just need to learn that themselves they can't really it's not one of those things that I feel like you can just like tell someone and they'll like actually take on it's like they're like yeah yeah I know that because I was that person. <laughs> Some reference again. I feel like I'm just making shit up. Um, mm, I'm not sure. I probably won't have time to do any texturing, but I could, just because I've kind of got, you know, then it's not like good topology or anything, but I've got something that I could technically UV. Um, so we'll kind of see how we go. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, considering, I don't think I've got too many of these streams, like I think I can uh, do a little bit more, but... I think I'm just going to predominantly focus on the kind of sculpting side of things, I reckon. Even though I would love to do all that. I mean, unless I can start doing some more streams and just sort of pick up where I left off and go through the whole thing, I might be able to do that, but... Yeah, I mean, if I was going to be texturing this, I'd probably, you know, have all these pouches be using the same sort of UVs or like a, you know, tiling sort of uh, leather sort of material and then try to like mask it out or something. Um, probably a few different ways I could kind of look at that. It kind of depends on what I'd be kind of making this for. So it's like, you know, if this was a... Um, if this was a film sort of thing, I'd maybe not be so worrying about mirroring too much, just because I'd probably just give it its own UV space or something, but, um, but yeah, if it was for a game, then I'd be trying to optimize stuff as much as possible. It's like I haven't done too much, like, IRN sort of game stuff in a little while. But I think the I think the main thing I'd probably be focusing on is um, just trying to optimize stuff in in like clever ways, I guess. Because like I remember seeing um, uh, what was it? There was like a Nathan Drake uh, thing. Oh, sorry, what was it Uncharted? It's like an Uncharted demo thing, and they were like showing how I don't, I don't know if you'd say it's procedural, but how optimized it was. Um, what would I be looking up? Uh, there's some really cool stuff where it's like even the trim on the pants and stuff like that was um, kind of, proce not procedural, but it was like tiled and layered and stuff like that. You know, if I was going to be doing a high-end game character anytime soon, I'd probably focus on, you know, handling it like that. I don't know where it could. I think there's like a, a talk about it, but it seems pretty cool. So. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much similar to what I was talking about last time with the um, characters that we did in LA Noir, how we'd have the, um, you know, 
tiling stuff, but yeah, I'd pretty much be trying to blend it all um, together into some different sort of ways, just so you can kind of get more resolution out of it. Yeah, it's like the thing that kind of didn't really work so much with that is, um, you know, I guess how we didn't have too many layers to sort of work with. We kind of just had the one tiling thing for budget stuff, but I feel like these days you'd have a bit more to work with. Mm. So I'm just going to make some poly groups for my poly paint, which I did the other day. Need to increase the tolerance of that. So, that's pretty tiny. I'm just gonna save this real quick because this might kill it. So, pretty much similar to what I was doing with how I extracted this section here. Pretty much going to be doing the same thing to extract these. So, in terms of layering, I'm kind of thinking it's like blue suit is like the base orange is the next one up and then um, blue is kind of on top of everything so that's how I'm going to look at it. I just might need to add my extra orange section. on this flood that just because I want there to be well in the concept there's a bit of a trim across there and um, actually, I think there's like a little bit of metal I kind of put there but I'm gonna ignore that for now um, oh really um it's pretty recent um, it's kind of one of those things where I think when I first started I mean I haven't like had a ton of um, I'm really playing with that brush actually this is kind of one of the first times I've really done too much with it but um yeah it can, it's one of those things that looks like it's going to be like world changing but it's like it's still just like another tool to use so it's like you still need to you know do some amount of sculpting or you know using file plus design or whatever it's like it does a lot and it's good but yeah it's not like going to do all the work for you kind of like what we were talking about before things just being tools. Alright, so, I'll go poly paint again. But yeah, I can't remember what it was, it was like within the last handful of updates I reckon. Ah, uh, yeah, pretty much. Um, there's kind of more to it, so there's like the brushes, but you can actually just like actually simulate stuff. So if you've got like a, you know, a blanket or a tablecloth or something like that, you can actually simulate that on top of something else, uh, which is really cool. Um, you know, depending on what you're needing to do, you can kind of do a lot with that, which is awesome. So, um, probably going to start with this. Actually, I might just update that a little bit. I realized I hadn't this so I'm just separating these out so they're going to be two halves when I do the next bit
Really? That's surprising. Like, do you not use it so much for environment stuff? I kind of assume there'd be still some amount. Like, um, do you use like much uh, mega scan stuff or? Yeah. I still, I mean, so I guess like as an environment artist, like, are you making props and stuff? Or are you kind of most mostly focusing on um, like terrain stuff? Like, what's what's your kind of like main focus? Feels like you're being interviewed or something, but <laughs> just curious. Yeah, I think like most of the productions I've been on for a while have kind of been a lot more like stylized sort of leaning, so I haven't really had to use any stuff like that myself, so. <laughs> no, that's fine, sorry if I'm asking too many questions, I don't want to get you in trouble or anything. So again, I'm just going to set the thickness to zero and extract this. And just hit accept. Right. So what I'm going to do at this point, I'm going to start kind of remeshing stuff really. So basically the similar sort of process that I used for um, the lower, more of the um, or that knee section. sense yeah it's interesting because um i mean like i've done some environment stuff but it's not been necessarily and i guess not big team stuff so most of the stuff i've been doing is like character stuff which is kind of like pretty self-contained
Zerstören. Like in terms of uh, production stuff, I wouldn't be using this for like final topology, even though like it's sometimes not like the worst. It's just sort of not going to be as optimized as you could probably get it as a uh, you know human doing it. But just for kind of cleaner stuff to be sculpting on, it's not too bad. this or apply actually <clears throat> before I do that I'm gonna save and then I'll kind of do it just in case I want to go back to anything uh, right now I'm just kind of doing the Z remesher so just automatic sort of stuff um, but <clears throat> this isn't what I would kind of do for like an actual production thing so pretty much um, I just sort of think ZBrush kind of acts a little bit better or at least like I have a better time sculpting on it when it's got subdivision levels to it and it you know the subdivisions are a little bit lower. I mean the topology here is not like awful, it's like you could probably do something with this. Um, you know if you wanted more control with it, actually doing topology would be better I would imagine. But um, yeah for retopology I would probably just be using, like Maya's uh, modeling toolkit thing's actually gotten pretty good probably end up just using that for the most part. So for this right now, if I just, so I've got my poly groups from, you know, when I ex uh, extruded this. So if I hold control and shift and, you know, just isolate this, what I can do is go to stroke, go to curve functions and go frame mesh. So what that's going to do is anything that's like got an open edge to it, it's just going to put a curve along it. And then what I can do from there is go to curve tube and um, it's going to add a curve tube along the edge, but it's going to be, oh, I need to turn off symmetry. Um, it's going to be dictated by the size of my brush. So I just need to decrease that and I'm just going to turn symmetry off temporarily otherwise it's going to double up. What you can do is like downsize it and then tap it again and it will kind of be the new size. So maybe just something like that. I just sort of want like a little bit of trim just to sort of make it look like it's made of something basically. So that's kind of all right. So I'm just going to go to sub tool split and Split mass points. Oh, it's down here as well. <laughs> so, yeah, that kind of. Oh no, what have I done? So yeah, just got a little bit of trim around there, and then once I kind of start getting into the blue stuff, I can kind of do a similar sort of thing for that. But what I'm going to do is just sort of work on the, because uh, it's got a little bit of uh, know, padding sort of thing. I don't know, I'm kind of imagining these lines here, kind of having their own, uh, I guess almost to a degree like this, um, I might even... I don't know. Be similar to that, I guess. Kind of. Bit 
more like the apps, I suppose. Anyway, that type of thing. So I'm just gonna subdivide it a little bit and then kind of start doing stuff. So just need to actually look at what my thing is doing. If I can remember the concept. What I'll probably do is actually do some poly paint on this and then I can kind of use poly group, uh, poly paint to poly group and mask some stuff out. So I just kind of need some, you know, wildly different colors just so it kind of contrasts. Turn the symmetry back on. So basically what I'm going to do is paint in my poly groups. Well, this is pretty much like each one of these is going to be a new sort of panel, I suppose. And just pretty much continuing on using different colors actually maybe I'll up a little bit so what I'm gonna do just as like a bit of a sneak peek um, I'm gonna go to polygroups and go from polypaint a little bit hard to see but that's kind of what it's going to do and then I can just sort of add I just need to uh, um, I should be able to add oh, sorry. should be able to add some group loops once I kind of get my process right um, there we go so what I'll be able to do is probably like polish by group as well I mean I'll do this at the end but Kind of see generally what I'm going for here. Kind of do that, ignore the poly paint because it's kind of just gone gross. But from here, I should be able to like inflate it a little bit and then just sort of hold shift and sort of smooth that out. And it's going to give me a nice little kind of trim in between. Kind of meet up and I kind of get that line stuff that I wanted without way too much work. It's kind of the name of the game. I'm going to get a lot of stuff done pretty quick if I kind of just build it up like that. A little bit gross color, but this is kind of generally the effect that I'm kind of going for. And then, you know, beyond that point, I can, um, you know, go in and you know, add some more fabric -y sort of stuff to make it feel like it's not just you know, weird stuff so yeah in a nutshell that's going to be my kind of way forwards uh, but I'll just need to set myself up for that so 313 not too bad all this cool. so next color something kind of so basically basically the main thing I'm looking for is just really contrasty colors.
gonna hide them kind of as I'm going so I can do the next color down the line without really impacting it. Just trying to figure out my own design a little bit. It's been like a few weeks since I drew that so I kind of can't remember what I was even going for anymore. do like a, a pass after this to double check if I don't know. Um, yeah just to double check if I've um done a good enough job of keeping everything well spaced but we'll see. a bit uh, intense, but that's fine. I'm just going to do this real quick. So saving this too, just so I can, I feel like any time I do anything like this, it's probably the time it's going to crash. So just making sure that's all tidy and oh, got a little extra poly group there. Is that just painting? That was just painting. That's all good. Cool. So. Uh, yeah, fingers crossed, see how we go. Um, so we're going to use polygroups. Uh, I'm just going to have one loop just so there's like one kind of color between the two and then polish. I don't know. Probably fine. Let's go group loops. There we go. Woof. Just worked. I mean, uh, yeah. I might actually tidy this section up just because I'm not very into how that looks seems a little bit too janky for my liking. Control W to update mask, I think. sure I'm kind of getting this right now because if I kind of don't do it now it's gonna 
not really be the way I want it, so. So, um, trick loops, cool, good. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna go down to deformation and going to use polish by group. So pretty much what that's gonna do is every poly group is gonna polish that. So I can kind of use this to just sort of even out some of these just so they're a little bit neater. Um, and what I can also do, potentially if I just use maybe either inflate or clay, might use inflate. Probably gonna be the way to way. Um, but if I go brush and auto masking, I can go mask by polygroups. So what that'll kind of do is, it's pretty much gonna only affect the polygroup that I'm kind of actively on. So it's gonna do that. So what that might kind of get me is a little bit more control instead of just kind of non-discriminately inflating everything I can kind of just sort of do this a little bit I'm gonna get all my colors back as they work so I don't really need that anymore Mm, I might actually subdivide just one more time. So undo all that just because it's not looking how I want. subdivide anyway. So yeah, I mean, I'm kind of more or less happy with how that's sort of turning out. It's kind of getting the right type of effect that I'm after. Or kind of just uh, feels like that layered sort of jumpsuity type of feel. I'm just kind of going over a couple of times with my inflate and then just putting shift and softening that out. That's also getting masked by the polygroup, which is good. Cool. So it's like, this is one of those things where I could have probably just, I mean, I did as like a lockout sort of thing, but I could have technically just drawn all this stuff out but I wouldn't have gotten this sort of sharpness but you kind of get that when you're using the uh, group loops or you know, poly groups like when you when your topology supports the shape you're making you can kind of get tighter patterns without necessarily even having as much geometry there so that's kind of nice so pretty much this is the type of thing I'd be doing for um, you know the boots for like these sort of sections here same basic principle and then from here I can kind of go in and uh, It's probably not going to do anything. It's probably too high poly. Yeah, too high poly. It's kind of the downside with um, the cloth stuff is like it's only going to work to some like, subdivision level. It's kind of a point where it kind of won't do anything. So. Like 
I'm kind of pre-planning a little bit. I'm not doing a very good job of it, but um, what I want to do is just have, like in the design, uh, actually in a different spot. I was kind of, I thought it was over here, but maybe I'll add another one of these little rivety things to um, just kind of chuck over this side, just so it looks like it's pinning everything down. I'll probably add a bit more sort of like bunching up in this sort of rear area here because I figure this part would probably bunch up quite a lot when they sort of put their arms down eventually. groups just because I want some of these wrinkles to kind of travel across these sections. in on this piece here which uh kind of similar sort of stuff really although i maybe haven't necessarily thought out hard enough how kind of connects down the middle here but maybe i can just sort of add a seam sort of thing on top of that and um you know if i was retopologizing it i'd just retopologize it into that piece so i'm just gonna right thickness yeah that's right it's gonna hit apply on still figure out a name for this guy. I actually wrote a bunch down that I found from that um that name generator the other week. There we go. So what a need a I don't know, do any of these sound cool? There was one that was pretty funny that I quite liked. What was it? Screaming, I don't know, it was like Screaming Kid or something. Uh, anyway, some of these are kind of cool. Yeah, Screaming Kid. That one's kind of fun. I like Cold Jackal. That one sounds kind of hardcore, but... Alright. Steel Jaws? That actually kind of makes a little bit of sense. <laughs> Kids getting in, yeah. It was like a, what was it? It was like a name generator that a guy made. It was like a Hideo Kojima uh, name thing. And you could like, you had to use like a bunch of like different die and stuff like that. And um, pretty much figure out your name if you're in a Hideo Kojima game. What was mine? It was something really weird. Let's see if I can find it. Mine was Big Breakfast Gravitational Wavesman. My name would be if I was in that game. <laughs> yeah, it's like on YouTube, you can check it out. Hmm. 
So I'm pretty much going to do the same thing I did before, where adding a stroke along the outside of that, and then adding a curve tube. All right. Okay. I need to tap off my mesh to kind of get that to confirm and then I can split by master points there we go so they're all kind of separate stuff now so I don't really have to worry too much about it um, getting affected if I start sculpting stuff there's a little bit of weirdness here but I can probably lean into that so same sort of process as before just want to isolate that a little bit um, pretty much going to be using poly paint and I'll be um, I mean that's actually kind of a little bit a part of the design so there's kind of like these kind of panels running up so I'm gonna kind of lean into it a little bit so I probably won't actually tidy it up but if I wanted to I'd just sort of be play brushing it out or something like that pretty much that maybe and just gonna go down to poly group poly group and buy poly paint so I think that's all good yep um, and similar to last time I'm just gonna go down to poly groups one just go group loop up. Missing a step, just need to polish those groups.
Um, so I might just sort of add in those little thingies like this at the moment. Um, I got my subdivision levels, that's good. So I'm going to add one here. One there. And try to make it the same size. hidden so I can get all that stuff back that a couple times there we go all the bolt things and then I can actually just use my standard brush to build some of this stuff back up Whoop, completely wrong sub tool wondering why that wasn't doing anything So I kind of want to feel like this is holding that up that way, but yeah, I maybe should have made them actually overlap, which kind of sucks, but all right for now. So yeah, one of the things I kind of like about having lower subdivision levels is if I hold shift to smooth something out, it would kind of be way more effective kind of just hold shift and it'll just really blast stuff out so I can kind of have things transition in and out of each other way easier. I did way too much stuff there, so I'm just going to kind of smooth it back out. There we go. So because I've technically got, you know, some amount of uh, topology there, it's not specifically good technology, uh, technology, sorry, topology, um, I can actually make some UVs out of this and do some other stuff. So I'm just going to go Z plugin. I saved it because I'm not sure how well this will work. I'm going to go polygroup, so just hit unwrap and see how well that goes. What was that, sorry? The, uh, oh yeah, the little, yeah, I forgot I drew that. <laughs> I mean that little blob of gray that I <laughs> drew in. Oh, actually, I totally added some little, um, scapular things in there that I've just completely forgotten about. Should probably add that in. And there's like a sort of you know, ulna sort of metal stripe that I've added as well, which I haven't put in. Uh, but because I've done some, you know, quote unquote UVs, uh, show you what they look like, kind of probably nothing. Uh, yeah, a little bit crazy, but what that will at least allow me to do is if I go to surface and just go light box, maybe I can sort of add some, you know, technology sort of looking stuff. I'm just going to go by UV because it, you know, kind of has UVs. Why not? Change the alpha scale to really small. So it's not using an actual color, um, but you can kind of see that I've got these little. It's basically just applying this little height map. Well, it's previewing this height map. Um, I can kind of make that fairly small, a little bit less intense. So it kind of looks like I've got all this sort of, you know, detail and stuff like that. Um, you know, maybe makes it look like I've done a little bit more work than I have. 
but like that's the sort of feeling that I'm kind of going for. So I mean, I wouldn't necessarily do that in ZBrush because I wouldn't really want to bake that across. I'd just do that in some other program, like I'd do that in Substance Painter or something. Um, it'd probably just be a little bit easier to do, but I think kind of doing stuff like this is kind of nice because it gives you a little bit of a, a preview as to what you're sort of going to be looking at in the end. Um, so yeah, kind of feeling uh, a little bit, I don't know. I'd maybe spend a bit more time on getting <laughs> these looking a little bit nicer, but being pressed for time. So I think the next kind of thing I'll do is I'll do pretty much a similar process for um, just like the whole chest section basically. And because I've kind of got the other pieces for their colors, I can just sort of fill object. Oh, hey man. Right, so I'm gonna go to geometry, go to Z remesher and uh, Good target five or something. I'm kind of just taking a little bit of a stab there. Um, might need to add some of these elsewhere just to kind of contextualize how that sits on there, but that's fine. Um, and I'm just going to try a zero mesh on this and see how that kind of works. So basically, at this point, this is kind of generally the process how I'd be kind of looking at tidying some of this stuff up and just sort of getting away from. The dynamesh sort of stuff um, and yeah if this was like for a production i wouldn't necessarily be um sorry i would be still needing to like retopologize this so i wouldn't be kind of leaving it with this topology this is just a you know a thing to get me to the next stage and you know like every so often you kind of do something and a zero measure might kind of do enough of the trick <laughs> for an asset so like i don't know if I somehow got these working right, maybe I'd use that, but I don't know. Sometimes it, just, it depends on how complex the sort of shape of the mesh is. I wouldn't allow it to do a character. I wouldn't allow it to do a character's face or anything like that. Actually, I might kind of undo that, but I mean, that generally looks okay. Um, what I might do is I might just actually duplicate this and then do it on this one because what I can do is uh, reproject it so I'll pretty much be getting back my sort of sculpted detail that I'll kind of lose when I Z remesh and it'll you can make it so it reprojects your poly paint as well which is pretty handy if you've you know, spent a little bit of time on it um, most of the time pretty much poly paint the only thing I'll really use that for is just sort of preview stuff just to sort of get an idea of what I'm looking at and um, you know using it to make polygroups out of basically that's about it but I know other people kind of do a little bit more with poly paint than me but it always just seems a bit smushy to me so I'm just going to go to uh, subtool project go project all but I'm only going to have visible the object I want it to project onto so I'm just going to project all just go uh, yes, so it'll have a little bit of a thing. It won't take that long because it's quite low poly. But if I control D to subdivide it and go project all, it's going to kind of project the next subdivision level. And then kind of there, like that. So I tend to kind of work my way up the mesh in terms of um, you know, subdividing, projecting, subdividing, projecting again. Um, I just kind of find that I get a little bit better of a result than what I kind of would if I subdivided it like you know four times and then projected it um, mostly depending on how complex your mesh is but uh yeah sometimes it can kind of freak out a little bit when um i don't know if something's like too much of a different shape you kind of can't figure out what to do but if you can like gradually step it along you can kind of get there reasonably so and also the higher you subdivide the slower it goes but i can kind of start i mean might not necessarily do it for this but at this point I would be kind of like unsculpting some of this part just because I don't really need it because I've actually got the extra sub tool for my um whatever that detail would be called so cool so I've got that I'm just going to delete that sub tool now so I've just got my you know 
quote-unquote good topology. You don't really see much of this stuff, so it doesn't matter too much. Not all really, just kind of doing it. Um, but yeah, what I can do is sort of basically the same effect I was doing before. So I might actually add one as well for like the front of this. Uh, I'm going to say it's a zip. Actually, I'm going to do that last because all this stuff will kind of go over the top of it, so get that. What I'm doing here, all this stuff's going to get hidden, so I'm not going to necessarily figure this out just because I'll probably end up spending a lot of time doing that if I do that. I'm just going to paint across that. I mean, I'm going to come back and tidy it up, but um, I just want to make sure that I don't get too many kind of colors at the seams there, so I just want to you know, over paint and then I can kind of come back and tidy it up. So that way extra seams and stuff should be kept to a minimum. So now we can kind of just go through do the chest section. I might just kind of leave that the color it kind of already was. Zip back in. Do that one's right. Cool. So, same, same stuff as before. <laughs> so I don't hate life. Um, I'm actually going to go to lower subdivision just so I can kind of smooth stuff out a little bit better and just delete lower subdivision. Group loops one. Oh. Polygroup and polypaint. tidy some of that stuff up. And that's kind of what I was talking about in terms of um, maybe I can just lower my tolerances. I 
not working. So what I'm going to do is go to poly paint and go to adjust colors. So I might just be able to increase the contrast of these. <clears throat> I mean, you know, it doesn't have to look good. Just needs to you know, do what I need it to. Why this is. this out because it's not really going to do what I want um, if I don't figure it out. a bit weird so I'm gonna see how we go with that. Yeah. Oh it's alright so I'm just gonna kill that colour. Go to the published by groups. And just make sure so I've got poly groups on, that's good. start tidying some of this up a little bit. Might do a separate piece of mesh. <coughs> Sorry, I'm losing my voice. Um, might do a separate piece of mesh for that um, central sort of bit, but for the rest of this, this will probably be fine. So yeah, starting, starting to get some of this you know, coming along. Um, I mean, the, probably the helmet is probably looking a little bit, you know, I mean, pretty much helmet and, I mean, basically everything <laughs> needs work. But uh, in terms of if I, was, if I was prioritizing stuff, I'd probably be looking at sort of polishing up the head a little bit more just because that's kind of uh, been left behind to some degree. Um, and then I would be looking at the hands, forearms, and then pretty much like key part, lesser key parts, and then just sort of gradually on our way down. But I mean, what's that total? Total six hours so far. Not too bad, I don't think. That's like, what is that? Kind of a day's work.
Yeah, so it's been, um, what? This is the third two hour session, so. Oh, she's moved. Yeah, that's why I'm not sure if I'll get to texturing it because mostly got. I think I might be able to do an extra one, but yeah, I've got too many sessions left. symmetrically just so it doesn't look so obviously symmetrical at that point. probably need to do at some point maybe next session or so um, I'm gonna try tidying some of this stuff up just because I think I'd rather see this uh, blue seam sort of sitting on top although seeing the double seam is not too bad I might just use some clipping actually. Um, just a clip curve which way, that way. Just kind of clean some of this stuff up. Hopefully. And then what I could potentially also do is uh, start using polygroups maybe to clean some of this up. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, what do we reckon about name? I'm kind of almost thinking Steel Jaws is kind of dumb enough and on the nose enough that it would kind of fit for a, the type of name that we're going for. I'm almost kind of thinking that, even though I like. What's it? I like Cold Jackal. I think that one's probably. <laughs> Screaming Kid's kind of soft spot even though it is kind of stupid. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I mean, scream kid. Yeah, probably. Anyway, keep thinking, but I reckon that's probably in the running. Oh yeah, it's got like a little back piece I need to do. Oh no, I've still got the cloth on.
probably do. Let's have a little look. Um, use the curve. Let's have a see if I can remember the shortcut. Yeah, that's kind of right. So if you do Control Shift E, I think it adds a poly group with an edge in it anyway. So if I just sort of go back out, go to deformation, I should probably move this down here, but I'm not going to. Um, watch by groups. Should. I think I've screwed that up, but that's fine. on as well. Eh, it's a thing. I'm not sure I like it, but... Maybe I can um, add some more of these bolts and stuff in there. Stop talking. <laughs> Sorry. Sort of focused in on this sort of area. Just want to feel like that's at least kind of integrated into the rest of the suit. Um, they probably would, but I would actually just sort of, like, I'm kind of using this more as, like, a temporary thing for just kind of getting, like, most of the, like, ideas down. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, I would I would actually just go in and um, remodel that. It's just like it's kind of just easy if I just grab all this sort of stuff and mush it around. But I can just sort of go into Maya and use this as like a base for like positioning, and then I can do like proper topology that might like subdivide nicer than this. Just because yeah, like this stuff here is kind of a bit wobbly and not nice looking. So you know, I would just sort of tidy that up at a later stage, which might be a little bit easier. Yeah. Uh, I mean, see how we go for time, <laughs> it pretty much is the thing, but yeah, pretty much. something with the uh, process that I'm thinking about. So essentially um, what I'd be doing is kind of just like doing a rough sculpt that kind of looks like this is just the practice demo thing I did for my classes. Um, I'm not sure if it's really easy to see. But I'll be essentially like sculpting stuff to kind of look about this sort of level. So there's like some stuff there, but it's obviously kind of smushy and weird. Um, but then I would kind of be going back over it inside of Maya with like, you know, some actual topology and stuff like that and working on it for like a subdivision sort of thing and kind of doing all these little you know bits and pieces like that so um yeah it's mostly just so i can kind of really quickly block shapes out but i'm not really committing too hard to like it being clean or not because i can kind of do that stuff in here a little bit easier um, i just sort of want the shapes there so yeah it's more or less that sort of process that i'm looking at so yeah didn't really get too far with it but then I can kind of go in and do all the little stuff like this you know so yeah it's like it's at this stage just so I know where I want the bolts and stuff so yeah so yeah same thing with the pretty much everything would basically be that sort of process which is it's one of those things where it's like you're kind of doing stuff twice and I'd kind of like see which which things would kind of be better to just you know straight up model like this or what would be worth figuring the shape out and then taking over so it's a little bit dependent so like i definitely do it with the helmet maybe i'll do the helmet next time like that might be good see how this looks in a render <clears throat> so i'm just going to go merge uh, visible it's going to get sped out on a new sub tool probably just need to dynamesh it real quick so sometimes i've kind of found that dynameshing well not dynameshing stuff and decimating it will kind of give some weird results where one thing will stay really high poly and then nothing else Everything just kind of gets turned into nothing, and one thing stays roughly the same. 150. So I made this uh, light rig for one of my classes so when we're sort of making um, you know a bunch of assets pretty much they can kind of pass through this as like a material check before they 
get put into actual scenes. Um, and we've, so we've kind of set it up so what you can do is just sort of drop your asset into the turntable group, which has got some animation on it. So we can kind of, that'll spin around and then the lighting spins around to sort of see it at some different angles and stuff. <clears throat> Especially if you're sort of like handing something off for uh, approvals, you can just sort of whack it in there, set a render up and then you know, come back in a bit, go get a coffee stuff off through the art director. Hello. How you doing? Um, I mean, uh, it's mostly just sort of mostly to check if things aren't blowing out too much. Oh, oops. Export. Um, yeah, I mean, if you've kind of, if you're wanting to be really specific with colors, I think that's like a particular, what does it say? Uh, I can't remember the name of it, Macbeth chart. Uh, the main thing I'm kind of looking at is the black and white value stuff, which looks a little bit dark on the screen. Um, Make sure I've got a grey material in there, so I can just drag this into my main group. Just rotate it by about five. Do a little render. Yeah, that's pretty much. It's like it's mostly just to see if anything's like too out of whack, really. Cool. Is wearing up a bit. Double check there was enough cores left to stream stuff. Sounds a bit like it's going to take off. So, yeah, got that kind of happening. It's a little bit slower than I'm kind of expecting. I might just drop the resolution down. Oh, well, why is it so big? Oops. I can do it. much better. I don't know why it was so big before. So yeah, I mean the main thing that I mean butt needs work, so maybe I'll focus on the pants next session. Um the chest section is also very kind of uh I don't know, taut, so maybe I'll kind of play with getting these kind of feeling like a bit more like an actual fabric, but some of that might come out of texturing and stuff, but I'll Still kind of do a bit of sculpting on that. So, but I mean, I kind of don't mind the way some of this stuff is sort of catching light there. That's kind of nice. Um, so yeah, I think I need like more wrinkles on the elbows. Uh, gloves need a lot of work. Pants need a lot of work. Just a lot to do. So little time. But overall, all right. Yeah, it's like it's kind of good for like showcasing, but also like um, you know, if I'm sort of like showing this to a art director or whatever, then you know they can kind of give some feedback and some different angles and stuff. I mean, I'd probably do some other 
close-ups and stuff like that if there was if this middle model was a bit further along or something um but yeah especially if i kind of tend to put assets through something like this just so everyone's uh yes it is arnold um but yeah just so everyone is kind of like on the same production they're kind of like putting their models through the same sort of lighting scenario so they know that you know the levels are kind of all checked out like things aren't blowing out so they don't have to make a lighting rig every time sort of thing it's not like particularly crazy it's just an hdri with a studio lighting thing that i got from what's it hdri oh is it polyhaven now changed it yeah i think it changed to polyhaven so yeah you can just get like free hdris from here and it's like it's like a studio one that's got some nice sort of lighting on it I've got a few, but I think I'm using five or something. Anyway, one of these. So yeah, it, it might be different every project, but yeah, it's pretty, yeah. Polyhaven, HDRI Haven, yeah. I think they changed a little bit, but anyway, yeah, that pretty much thing. So, um, but yeah, I just kind of find that it's you know, good to keep everyone on the same page. If you've got multiple artists working on assets or something, it just sort of keeps it all in line. So. You don't put it in a scene and you know a light is working on something and it kind of is like an asset's way too dark because someone making the asset was checking it in a scene that was way too bright or something like that so it just kind of evens everything out a little bit so yeah and it looks professional but anyway i think i'm i don't know good with time yep Cool. All right. Well, I think that's pretty much it for me for today. Um, cheers for tuning in, everyone. Um, good to see you again. I'll be here the same time next week if you want to swing by and chat again. Um, cheers, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think next week I'll be kind of focusing on pretty much pants and... Um, I think pants will be the big thing. That'll probably take me a little bit of time. Um, yeah, pants and boots, I reckon. Pants, boots, gloves. See how we go. Um, kind of got the knee pads somewhere along. <laughs> see how we go. But anyway, yeah, it's been fun. Cheers for tuning in. See you next week. Right. Catch you.